Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna put this focuser on my Stellarview 102 millimeter refractor. What better way to start this channel than to get into focus? All right, let's get started installing the ZWO electronic automatic focuser. First, we're gonna to need to remove the lockdown for the focuser. We'll set that aside. Next, you'll need to rotate this coarse focus knob so you have access to the grub screw that holds it onto the shaft. and it just slides right off. Gonna go ahead and screw this grub screw back in, that way we don't lose it. Now this is the universal bracket that comes with the focuser. It looks like it's gonna need to sit about here, which means we're not gonna be able to use both of the mounting screws. we're going to have to eventually get a set of longer screws to hold the focuser in place. But I think one will do it for now. But in the long term, it would definitely be a good idea to get some longer screws. <clears throat> now this is the problem I ran into when researching this focuser. Not many people have installed it on a stellar view refractor not to mention that there's different options for which focuser you can get with their refractors now this is the three inch stellar view focuser they also offer a feather touch and they're different size refractors they have a two and a half inch focuser as well this hole right here has a cosmetic screw that you can remove out of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this side here where we took out the locking mechanism for the focuser. Now you don't wanna tighten this down all the way because eventually it'll act as a lock like this thumb screw did and you won't be able to adjust the focus. Now for this collar, we're going to go ahead and slide it on, and we're going to make sure that one of the grub screws is on this flat part right here. So we're going to push it on, and then we're going to back it off a little bit, just so there's a little bit of gap between the bearing on the focuser itself and this coupler. Next, we're gonna go ahead and attach the EAF. This is the five volt version, which only requires a USB two input, and it also has the hand paddle or temperature probe. You do not need an external power supply for this. They also have the 12 volt version, which does require a 12 volt input. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this, except there, there's no flat edge on the motor. So we're gonna put it on and we're just gonna back it off a little bit just so there's a little bit of a gap. Once we get these tightened down, you'll notice that there's a lot of play in this coupler. And that's to be expected from the design. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this bracket here. We're gonna just lay it on top and we're gonna attach the bracket to the motor itself. We're just gonna use two of these screws with the washers. We're not gonna tighten them all the way yet. Cause we wanna get an idea of where the focuser is gonna sit.
Now, once we get this all installed, we're going to have to calculate the backlash of the gear set. So the backlash is essentially every gear, when they mate together, there's just a little bit of play. And as long as all the gears are rotating the same way, they're always in contact. But since the focuser can go in and back out, there'll always be a little bit of play. And each gear has that play. Now, once we get this mounted, you'll see that I'll be able to rotate this fine focus knob just a little bit and the motor itself won't move. That's the backlash in the entire system. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate that and get it all set up on the PC. So I was right. It looks like we won't be able to use this screw at all. And it looks like I'm just going to be able to replace these two back screws with a set of longer screws. That'll give three points of contact and I feel confident that that'll work in the long term. For now, just for demonstration, we're gonna just put one in. Once again, none of these are tight yet. So I have movement this way and I have movement in the bracket this way. So now that this looks leveled up, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the two screws that goes into the focuser motor itself. Now to minimize any backlash in this coupler, we're going to try to compress that coupler a little bit. And at the same time, we're going to tighten up this screw here. By tightening, by compressing that, it's going to allow us to remove a little bit of play in that coupler. So now that everything's tightened down, you'll notice that still a good bit of movement on this fine focus knob. And you can even see the focus tube moving a little bit. That's the backlash that we need to compensate for. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just plug in the focuser and I'm just gonna verify its operation. I've already installed ASCOM on this computer as well as went to the ZWS website and installed their native drivers for the device. As you can see, appears to be working properly. And even just with this one screw in, there's really no flexure. But just to be safe, I am going to find two longer screws to give it three solid mounting points. Move out a couple more steps. And we're good to go. All right, everyone. That wraps up the installation of the ZWO electronic autofocuser on my Stellar V refractor. I'm gonna have to get those two longer screws. And once I do, I'll post another video about how to compensate for that backlash. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you wanna help this channel grow, click that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss out on future videos as well as live stream virtual star parties. Thanks for watching everyone.